With its 22 million inhabitants, Mumbai is the economic and financial capital of India. Each morning, the city is brought to a halt by huge traffic jams. To get to work, eight million people take the train each day. But the railway network only has four lines. So at rush hour, the stations are swarming with people. In the midst of this crowd of commuters, made up almost exclusively of men, Vinit, a 26-year-old accountant, has an hour and a half commute each morning. To get on the train, Vinit has to elbow his way through. A pleasant surprise. A seat opens up right in front of him. Inside the carriages, the worn-out fans are not enough to lower the near 45-degree temperatures. Despite overcrowding, insurance agents, lawyers and bank employees are still smiling. But this daily routine is not so fun for every passenger. Some never even reach their destination. Between those who hang onto the carriages and those who lean out of the train, casualties have become commonplace. This woman narrowly escaped death, only just caught by another passenger. This man, in the pink shirt, let go under the pressure of the other passengers. He fell to his death. This commuter also lost his life. Vinit is nearing his destination. When you get to work, uh, you're exhausted, no? Yes, very exhausted. For the half an hour, we have to take this. Although he has arrived safe and sound, in 2019, 2,691 people died on the railway in Mumbai. A shocking average of seven deaths a day. Samir Tseveri miraculously survived falling onto the rails. 30 years ago, he lost both his legs in a tragic accident. There was no foot of bridge, so I was crossing the railway track and I fall. But uh, I was lucky that my body was out of the railway track, only legs were on the track. And train came and suddenly it ran over the my legs. And the people who were there in the night time took me to the nearest hospital. So therefore, they immediately, within five to ten minutes, my blood was stopped, bleeding was stopped, and my life was saved. Since then, Zamir has persistently lobbied the authorities to increase safety on trains. It carry three to four times more passengers compared to its capacity. So I am sincere the demanding the suburban train in Mumbai have all its doors required to close it. And other is 
if any person get injured then there must be the emergency medical services and the full treatment free of cost from government to relieve the overcrowded trains and congested stations four subway lines are currently under construction but the overcrowded megalopolis is facing many other challenges located on the west coast of india the city of Mumbai, formerly known as Bombay, is the country's economic centre. The population of this former British colonial city has skyrocketed. Bombay had a population of 3 million in 1951. Today, it is home to 22 million people, and this figure is expected to grow to 30 million by 2035. To overcome the lack of space, hundreds of high-rise luxury apartments are being built, designed for the wealthy upper class, who dream of adopting a more European lifestyle. To build these huge housing complexes, the authorities are demolishing hundreds of acres of slums. Bharat Dupar works for a property developer. So with such a beautiful view, you still have a lot of slums, slums left to be cleared. These poor neighborhoods are home to 50% of Mumbai's population, but their resourcefulness and ingenuity has helped them to survive. These shanty towns are expanding to the north. The city is growing at such a rate that it is having to encroach upon the Sanjay Gandhi National Park, home to many wild animals including leopards. They are venturing into the new neighbourhoods built on the edge of the forest. The number of attacks has shot up in recent months. But far from the slums, Mumbai is also a city of dreams, especially thanks to Bollywood, its glamorous film industry, which produces nearly 2,000 films a year. Downtown, trendy neighbourhoods are booming, such as Bandra. This is where Janita set herself up as a model and businesswoman. To be honest, Bombay is a city of dreams. Amid the people of Mumbai's thirst for success and the battle for survival, the sprawling megalopolis is the symbol of the Indian dream. The biggest slum in Asia can be found in the heart of Mumbai, the Dharavi slums. One million people crammed into just under one square mile. A population density 20 times higher than that of Paris. The electricity grid is precarious. Water is only available two hours per day. And the sewage system is non-existent. Behind its obvious poverty, the slum is packed with enterprise. It is home to thousands of businesses, small auto repair shops where workers cut car parts. Or even make clothes. <laughs> Mahesh is 27 years old. He grew up in Dharavi. This morning, he received some goods that are very valuable to him, some plastic containers. <laughs> Mahesh has found a way to become rich by clearing Mumbai of its garbage. <laughs> His recycling business supports 25 employees. 
For 200 rupees a day, which is around $3, the workers sort the plastic waste according to colour and various other qualities. Once separated, the plastic is crushed. For $6 a day, these men stick their hands into this machine without any protection. Then the bags of pellets are sent off to wholesalers to be processed. In Taravi, 12,000 people work in the plastics industry. 60% of the city's plastic waste is sorted here. Thanks to his work, Mahesh earns $600 a month. This is the average wage for those in Mumbai, but 10 times higher than in the rest of India. He lives near his factory with his parents in this 54 square feet room. Yet Mahesh is content with these difficult living conditions. In fact, Mahesh and his family own this entire house. To climb to the first floor, you have to climb a ladder with the help of a rope. The second floor is also rented to workers. Finally, a sewing workshop is situated on the top floor. These three rentals bring Mahesh $240 a month. Daharavi's informal economy generates over $800 million each year. This resourceful spirit fascinates people across the world. This is where the movie Slumdog Millionaire was filmed. Since this success, tourists come from all over the world to visit its maze of garbage-strewn alleys. And some take the opportunity to do some shopping and experience the local colour. Like in this leather shop at the end of this alleyway. It sells leather goods branded with the name of the slum. How much is this? 3,200. This visitor from China is taken aback by the city. Here it feels like in normal commercial area. Looking at their face, they are smiling. I'm surprised by the ability of human being to survive in in really harsh environment. It's a sweat leather now. It's 3,500. Imran, the 29-year-old boss, sells the bags himself. It's 50 US dollars. And we accepted card, dollar, euro, every type of money here. Don't worry about cash. It's 50 dollars. <laughs> Proud of his brand of leather that bears the name of his neighborhood, Imran is full of ambition. It's a slum, but it's a different type of slum. It's like a small scale industry. People are not doing crime here. People are doing struggling here. He's looking for the success. We also try same like that. And we, it's our goal. We see our brand also, uh, Dharavi brand in future. It's, uh, uh, top of like Michael Kors, Jimmy Choo, top of them. In total, Imran employs around 40 members of staff to tan and colour the leather.
Imran's father, Wahaz, is the man behind this incredible success. Forty years ago, Wahaz fled Uttar Pradesh, a poverty-stricken region in northern India, with dreams of a better life in Mumbai. Wahaz's life is like a fairy tale. Five years ago, he and his family bought an apartment on the top floor of this modern high-rise building, located in the middle of a shanty town. They paid $360,000 for this 750 square foot space with breathtaking views of the city. This is the master bedroom for my father and my mother. And we have one small boy bedroom for me here. Come, I show you. And you see the decoration, I keep very honesty and very hard working on it to make this house. Today, Imran, his wife, their three children and their parents make up the 20% of Mumbai residents with access to running water. We have a 24 hour water here. Is it a dream come true? Yes, my dream come true. The young entrepreneur from the slum is proud to have entered the exclusive circle of privileged Mumbai residents. Most of the celebrities and most of the uh, politicians are living in top floor, mostly because they have lots of money. So it is a sign of success. People are like to live to and dream. It is a dream of many people to live in an upstairs on top of the floor. Yeah. In Mumbai, the richer you are, the higher you live. Down below, the city is suffocated by pollution, and the noise is constant. Life is much calmer at the top. The most affluent residents can gain access to this tranquility from their upper floor apartments in high-rise buildings. One of the richest people in the city lives on the top floor of this skyscraper. Good morning. Babu Lal Varma is a successful real estate broker. He lives in this lavish 2,700 square foot apartment with his wife and two children. Every morning, the servants prepare breakfast. Babulal is originally from Rajasthan. He moved to Mumbai around 20 years ago, captivated by the city's dynamism. My construction is my family business. So my father, my forefather, this uh, his, I think we are we are in this business from last hundred years. So the, if you will go in Rajasthan, you can see the big uh, palaces. So they built by uh, my great great grandfathers. And how and why did you decide yourself to come to Bombay? Bombay is a growing city, and uh, we all wants to uh, grow and. Is, uh, I think the opportunity in Mumbai is huge. In 2003, Babulal built his first residential high-rise. These days, the property developer works on multiple projects across the city. <laughs> we are doing a lot of high-rise buildings. I think in, as a group with my partners, we are doing 35 buildings, more than 50 story. According to you, is it a necessity to build uh, higher? Yeah, it is a necessity because we have no space in Mumbai. I told you that the three sides are water. 
So if you want to grow this city, the population is increasing every day, then you have no other than way to go up only. To compensate for this lack of space, Babulal has a drastic solution. Demolish the hundreds of acres of slums. So we are just, we have started demolishing this. this is, it is touching to the breeze. If you will come after one year, two years later, there's a beautiful building will be here. His ultimate goal is to tear down the Dharavi neighborhood. So I think uh, uh, we all know about the Dharavi slum dog millionaire. It is hard in the city. And uh, if, if your heart is a little bit not proper and uh, it looks like a dirty, then you will not, as a city, it look, doesn't look nice. Babulal is the head of Omkar, one of India's leading companies on what is known as slum rehabilitation. It employs more than 800 members of staff. <laughs> this morning, the realtor summoned his management team to provide an update on one of their biggest projects. Before beginning this colossal construction work, Babulal and his team must convince the residents to leave. We are clearing the slums, that is a 65 acre big slum pocket is there. And uh, mixed use project, uh, Kender, mall, commercial office, residence, and uh, retail. Babulal has already wiped out hundreds of acres of slums. One of his biggest projects is in Malad, in North Mumbai. He is building four 820 feet high skyscrapers on the foundations of what was once a slum. It will be a residential complex intended for the emerging middle class. At the bottom of the buildings, this showroom plays host to a constant stream of potential buyers. Raj owns a printing business. He has come here with his wife and daughter. The visit starts with a promotional video. They are sold an idyllic way of life, a green oasis, a breath of fresh air that seems far from the hustle and bustle of the city. Raj and his family are visiting a model apartment. Come, this side. So this is the apartment we have seen, this is the 3BH apartment. Where I have, so what is the most important thing in my house, where we spend maximum time spent, is this area and which we have lavishly designed. So after that, we have seen... Raj appears to have been won over. At the moment, he is living in a two-room apartment. His daughter has to sleep in the living room. This is not a balcony, obviously this is a connecting deck. The apartment is 560 square feet. Three bedrooms, three bathrooms, and a fully fitted kitchen. Something of a novelty for this emerging middle class family. No, it's all on money, budget. And I think he will compromise on it. <laughs> we are ready to move. No, or depend on him. The family has fallen in love with it, but there's just one small hiccup, the price. $780,000. Although it is still possible to negotiate, Raj is going to wait a bit before deciding. In the showroom, Bharat Dupa, the CEO of the project, has just struck a deal with another client on a $1 million apartment. 
तो थर्टी सिक्स परसेंट डिस्काउंट मैं देता हूँ उसको वो मेरे को थर्टी सिक्स परसेंट डिस्काउंट दे आगे से डन डन मेरा भी डन हो जाएगा एयरपोर्ट पे चलाएंगे डन These housing complexes that offer a life of privacy are all the rage in India. Surveying the slums at the foot of the buildings, Bharat Dupa is already thinking about the next step. So what I'm looking at is how much of the area we have been able to clean up and how much is still left. There's a lot left. So with such a beautiful view, you still have a lot of slums slums left to be cleared. But in order to demolish the slums and build new housing, the property developers have to relocate the residents. They are required by law to do so. Basically, it's a scheme whereby you basically want uh, the slum uh, people, they get proper houses, we build proper houses for them and rehabilitate them in those houses. So what happens is in the entire land, you have some houses which you build for them and some houses you build and sell. So that is how poor people get houses for free and while as the remaining part of the land you are able to make houses and sell so what do the buildings that house the former slum dwellers look like in worli a central district of the city there is another one of omkar's rehabilitation projects three 885 foot luxury high rise buildings and below apartment blocks built for former residents of the slums dilapidated they are only a few meters apart a relocated resident talks to us furious hum logon ne kandhe se kandha mila ke unka saath diya babulal verma aur kaushik more ka lekin ye developer hum logon ka bhi nahi hua aaj dekhiye kitne saal se 12 saal se development ho raha hai aisa hota hai aaj na road bana hai na garden hai na sab ye sab kharab hai sir contrary to the property developers promises there is no school and the shops are still under construction ab teen teen saal se na koi leader bolne wala hai na koi bol raha hai garib log jaye bhi to kahan our interview is cut short by omkar's public relations officer he strictly forbids us from seeking the opinions of dissatisfied residents our filming continues inside the building under the close supervision of suresh their public relations officer He has selected a family of 6 that live in this two room space of 312 square feet which they were given for free. We are now going to witness a true exercise in public relations. Thinking that we do not understand the language, the public relations officer dictates his message to the father of the family. Aur ye ye bolenge ki main nahi pita. Iske liye mujhe diabetes hai main pita nahi. To ye bolna hai ki ye mera bachcha hai. मेरा मेरी जब ये उम्र थी तो मैं झोपड़पट्टी में बड़ा हुआ और मेरे माँ बाप ने हो सकता उतना मुझे पढ़ाया पर मैं चाहता हूँ कि आज उसको अच्छा लाइफस्टाइल मिले और जो उनका के बदौलत उनको मिल रहा है The man perfectly recites his speech. हाँ जब भी हम इसके इतने छोटे थे हम हम पूरा झोपड़पट्टी में रहते थे ये रिश्ता मेरे में रहते थे हम लोग तो हम आज इतना अच्छा हमें घर उनका ने करके दिया कि हमारा और अच्छे से रहेगा इतने अच्छे से माहौल में इतने अच्छे से घर में रहेगा तो उनका भी अच्छे से पढ़ाई वढ़ाई सब अच्छे से होएगा हाँ इंजीनियर नहीं बने गए उसको पुलिस वाला बनने गए हाँ दिस फैमिली कैन कंसिडर दम सेल्फ लकी बिकॉज नॉट एवरी वन इज इन टाइटल टू न्यू हाउसिंग टू बी गिवन अ स्टैंडर्ड नाइन्टी फाइव स्क्वेयर फुट अपार्टमेंट यू हैव टू प्रूव दैट यू हैव लिव इन द स्लम फॉर ट्वेंटी ईयर्स So, what happens to the residents who do not meet these criteria? They are moved to the outskirts of the city in commuter towns such as Lalubai compound. 50,000 people are crammed into around 60 blocks of decrepit apartments. They were built just 10 years ago. Waste water is discharged in the canal at the entrance of the neighborhood. These two buildings house 200 families originally from Dharavi who were forced to relocate to Lalubai 8 years ago. 
Abdul and his family of six live in this two-room apartment. The plot of land he occupied in Dharavi was bulldozed by the authorities. In Dharavi, Abdul owned a business. These days he works as a delivery man and earns half as much. This family of scrap iron workers also miss their old neighborhood. Three separate generations live together in this 312 square foot dwelling. Sada is not happy with the authorities. This slum rehabilitation policy has displaced and verticalized poverty. This shortage of space is only going to get worse as the population of Mumbai is expected to grow by 8 million residents in the next 15 years. Every day, 1,500 migrants from all over India settle in this sprawling megalopolis. Most of them carry out odd jobs. The labyrinth of small streets and alleyways are brimming with barbers, dressmakers and street vendors selling spicy food. <laughs> the most incredible workers are those who deliver food on their bicycles. Dating back 130 years, it is the most reliable delivery system in the world. Shankar, aged 23, is what is known as a dabawala, a packed lunch delivery man. There are 5,000 of them in Mumbai. Once the packed lunches have been collected at the customer's home, Shankar meets up with his fellow Dabawalas. Each delivery man has a delivery zone. They exchange lunch boxes depending on their destination. And to do this, there's no need for a modern system with advanced algorithms. Each basket is marked with a complex code of letters and numbers. The Dabawalas are illiterate, but amazingly, they are able to decipher it. This archaic system is foolproof. The Dabawalas are almost never wrong. Harvard University even conducted a study to try and understand how they pull this off. With 66 pounds on the carrier and the stifling 113 degree heat, each turn of the pedal is like torture. So to keep himself going, Shankar sings himself a tune. <laughs> Uh. 
At exactly midday, he reaches the first delivery point. This young accountant pays $12 a month for Shankar's services. Fresh or hot, warm food is good for body, it's healthy for the body. Shankar earns 12,000 rupees a month, equal to $163. That's four times less than the average wage in Mumbai. But he didn't exactly choose this demanding job as a dabawala. It is passed on from father to son. Each year, Shankar and his fellow Dabawalas deliver 73 million meals. While some age-old traditions persist in Mumbai, other parts of the megalopolis are firmly focused on the future. Like the neighborhood Bandra, situated on the Arabian Sea. With its tree-lined avenues and green spaces, luxury stores, old colonial houses and elegant buildings, this haven of peace is the neighborhood of choice for Bollywood actors and trendy artists. Perched on the roof of this contemporary art gallery, 32-year-old Janita is in the middle of a workout. I'm not perfect, I know that but I'm still learning. It took me years to at least come to this. Janita is part of Mumbai's high society. She has a career as a model and influencer. She has nearly 90,000 followers on Instagram. To be honest, Bombay is a city of dreams. Uh, some, some people are actually lucky if you find a way through in whatever you want to do in your life. And that's where the city really helps if you have the right contacts and the right direction and the right experience. Before she starts work for the day, Janita likes to come for a walk by the sea. One of the few places in the city free from pollution. So we are on Carter Road. It's in Bandra, obviously. It's cold, sea facing. It's just so beautiful uh, in the mornings and evenings to be here, especially during sunset. It just feels like a different place in Bombay. A year ago, Janita became a businesswoman. She launched a women's fashion brand. And we have products like these, like, you know, the harness belts, the ankle length boots, we've got bags, and all of it is vegan leather. Her modern creations are appealing to more and more Indian women. In this still very conservative country, Janita is proud to be bringing about change. Women are now, like, there are a lot of corporate women, they're more westernized women. A woman in India can actually carry an Indian look and turn and switch into this other woman who's actually wearing a dress and a backless gown, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of an Indian woman and Indian fashion. This morning, she has a meeting with one of her business friends, Suran. He has just opened this hip cafe, and Janita wants to show him her latest collection. What do you have Starting soon, very soon, there's going to be a surprise. Bombay is everything you want it to be. It's got a bit of everything. So whatever you plan, it all works. It's about just presenting it rightly and putting it out there. And she is Bombay. Thanks. I don't know Hi. when I'm going to see you next, but... 
In this city of endless possibilities, some French people are capitalizing on this economic miracle. Just 330 feet away, Antonia, Jeremy and Pierre are attending a strange ceremony. Pandits, Hindu priests, are blessing the new bakery of these three French people. This is called a puja. These three French people moved to Mumbai 10 years ago, attracted by the city's magnetism. They were met with incredible success. In addition to their bakery, these entrepreneurs own a chain of restaurants offering organic and local products. It's a popular concept in Europe, but in India it is still a novelty. They created something which is very uh, uh, unique and uh, in terms of the quality of the food is amazing. And that's what we keep trying. And also because they're amazing as well. And they do so effortlessly. You don't see any stress or tension on them. You feel like they are, though they're running like a whole empire. Good food, good people. Thank you, mate. Each day, these French entrepreneurs check in on their businesses. To get from one establishment to the other requires a lot of patience. Pour faire 20 km, ça peut prendre une heure, une heure et demie. Il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de, de trafic. Il faut bien calculer ces temps de trajet. Après, euh, ici, les gens sont un peu plus euh, flexibles sur les, les horaires des rendez-vous qu'à qu Paris. Donc, euh, on a tous pris l'habitude d'arriver un peu en retard. Donc, on en profite pour envoyer les emails, passer des coups de fil. Euh, moi, j'en profite pour dormir. Faire nos réunions quand on est tous les trois. The last restaurant they opened is in Bandra Kula complex a brand new neighborhood built on marshland. It is home to the headquarters of large corporations such as Google, Amazon and even IBM. It's not the image that people have of the city when they think of Bombay, they think of the small streets, the middle of the world. They have not the image of a city like that, very organized, with the great gratte-ciel. And yet, it's what has been developed in the last few years. So, we have today three Trois points de vente ici dans ce quartier-là. On va certainement en faire d'autres parce que c'est une ville dans la ville. Il y a, je crois, juste comme un million de personnes qui, qui travaillent ici. C'est un endroit très stratégique. Here, business people, executives, and financiers have greater purchasing power. They spend an average of $12 per meal. Alors par rapport à où on était ce matin, c'est pas, pas vraiment une clientèle de quartier, c'est une clientèle de bureau. Euh, c'est des gens euh, qui sont très pressés, c'est vraiment euh, costume, cravate, euh, assez, euh, assez corporate, assez sérieux. The 200 members of staff in the kitchen and dining areas of the French entrepreneurs' restaurants are Indian. They are part of the emerging middle class. Darshan holds a clerical position. I started my cooking two years back, but I, I learned many things uh, like uh, different kind of bread and a lot of things like sourdough. It was a new concept here because I learned about the organic food, what we serve here. It was really amazing. It's a new opportunity for me also. Thanks to Mumbai's economic dynamism, so there'll be one access here. Yeah. Jeremy, Pierre and Antonia plan to open around 10 more restaurants in new neighborhoods. With the ever-increasing population, the city is pressing further into protected natural areas. In the north of Mumbai, urbanization is causing serious conflict between residents and wildlife. With an area of over 25,000 acres, the size of Paris, the Sanjay Gandhi National Park is surrounded by houses. The slums are inexorably moving further into the wilderness. At night, leopards living in the park venture into residential areas. They head into building lobbies, parking lots. They mainly go after dogs, but occasionally attack humans. Thank you. 
In the heart of the park, Ranjit Jadav has been keeping an eye on the leopards' movements for seven years. Ranjit is a wildlife photographer. His photographs are famous worldwide. Together with his colleagues, he retrieves the images captured the night before by camera traps. Stop. By observing these images, Ranjit has concluded that the felines are no longer afraid to move closer to residents' homes. So we have got certain footages or, uh, you know, pictures very close to human settlements and pictures of people also walking few minutes after the leopard had gone from that. These predators lurking just outside of Mumbai are a concern for the public. In Are Colony, a neighbourhood straddling the borders of the park, some 60 families live in constant fear of being attacked. Krupa Tukar works for the Department of Forestry. But the locals are reluctant to enforce these rules. They want the local council to install street lighting to help spot leopards at night. Sonu, Krupa's colleague, attempts to calm the anger of the locals. But the residents are calling for a much more radical solution. To calm the anger of the locals, the city has created a squad that is specifically tasked with preventing these feline incursions. Santosh Banya, the squadron leader, has just been called upon by frightened villagers. Santosh and his team approached the area cautiously. Despite the presence of predators in the area, a man has come to meet the rangers. After a few minutes, peace is restored around the buildings. The presence of the rangers seems to have scared off the leopard. 
Despite these words of reassurance, the number of attacks has escalated in recent months. In Maharashtra, the state in which Bombay sits, there have been 24 fatal attacks in 2020. Mutuvel and his wife lost their daughter four years ago when she was eaten by a leopard. Darshani, four years old at the time, was playing in front of the family home at dusk. Her parents found the remains of her body two days later. Since this tragic event, Mutuvel has been constantly on guard. The family are now very angry with these cats that prowl the streets. In the heart of the Sanjay Gandhi National Park, at the Leopard Rescue Centre, the rangers' lives are accompanied by a soundtrack of constant roaring. Mukesh Moore looks after around 15 leopards that have been captured by his team. Here, each cage houses a killer. The adult leopard weighs no more than around 130 pounds, but it is an excellent hunter, capable of carrying a prey of 330 pounds. <coughs> In areas close to cities, more than a quarter of their diet comes from livestock or pets. According to Mukesh Moore, leopards are direct victims of the region's rampant urbanization. This conflict between man and leopard is likely to get worse in Mumbai. Well fed, the leopards have perfectly adapted to their cohabitation with humans. Their number has increased by 30% over the last five years. And Mumbai looks like it will continue to push the forest back in the years ahead. By 2050, the Indian megalopolis could become the most populated city in the world, with 42 million inhabitants. Since we finished working on this film, Babulal Varma, the real estate broker, has been incarcerated under suspicion of fraud and embezzlement. <laughs>